Uh, so, Mark, I'll start with you. Uh, you know, they always start with the star, the oh, movie star. <laughs> Will you stop? And we have any time, we'll get to right. that bit player. Well, he's a brilliant hydro scientist, and he now has like a technological body. I mean, he's been implanted into this robot like exoskeleton. I mean, it's fantastic fantasy. And he's a time traveler who's been locked in a 70 year battle with Captain America. And I'm excited because Black Panther's coming into the storyline and I'm a huge fan of, of that character. See, I'm just a comic book geek. I mean, when I was a kid of the 60s, I would read the Marvel comics and Stan created a real bond with his audience, you know, in the bullpen. He had that sort of snarky humor. He would give away no prizes because people were always pointing out boo-boos and mistakes and stuff. And he really had a personality that came across over the pages. He sort of, you know, this avuncular uh, uncle you wish you had. On television, it was Walt Disney. In comic books, it was Stan the Man. Excelsior! Oh, if yeah. I knew he was going to speak so nicely about me, I'd have been nicer to him. <laughs> I'm sorry for all the things I said. I really do like you. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> because when I hear him read the lines, when I hear how talented he is, oh, how he can do another dialect mm. and become another person, it's fantastic. <laughs> I read lines beautifully, but only as myself. I mean, if I had to be Baron Zemo, I wouldn't know how to do it. That was pretty good. But he good. becomes Baron Zemo. <laughs> that was pretty good right there. <laughs> Well, it was a thrill to meet him, and over the years I've, I've seen him in so many different occasions at cons and different events, and, uh, uh, you know, I just, uh, I adore this man. And I remember, I have to tell this story again, but I said to him, because I mean, he just defies time, you know? I get older, he stays the same. So I said to him at one point, how is it that you maintain this this vitality and, 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 and this youthful demeanor? And he said, well, Mark! I get up every morning and worry very hard all day long. I, I've never forgotten that. That's great advice. But you see, even there, he added more personality. <laughs> all I said was, I get up every morning and, you know, we're, <laughs> with him, I get up every yeah. morning. Well, first of all, he has to have more than just an evil power. There has to be something interesting about him, his personal life or what he wants. Now, I was telling Mark. It is Mark. Mark, the other day. Mr. Hamill to you. All right. You take someone like um, Dr. Doom. Mm -hmm. Everybody, he wants to conquer the world. Everybody considers him a terrible villain. But if you think about it, you could go to a policeman outside and tap him on the shoulder and say, officer, I'd like to conquer the world. He can't arrest you. It's not a crime to want to conquer the world. So our villains really are not the kind of villains that are so obvious. You know, they're just bad. Let's kill them. They have their own motivations. They have their own differences, uh, their own ambitions. They're more interesting than the heroes, I think. I mean, you give me a good villain and he'll probably do a great voice for it. <laughs> Well, I always try and see what his place is in that particular script. What function does the script require of that character? Villains never think of themselves as evil. That, that's a, you know, a real misdirection. You, you can't play evil. They're misunderstood. They think that they're, what they're doing is what should be done. Uh, and I love the complex characters that, that Stan's written over the years because they all have inner conflict and turmoil. I mean, what set the Marvel comics apart for me w was the fact that they had flaws. They argued with each other, you know? Uh, other superheroes were all Boy Scouts, all of them. They didn't have any flaws. And then you have Tony Stark. He's an alcoholic. I mean, they, there were there were real life uh, uh, attributes that you could really relate to. 
reminds me of when I would read stories or tell stories to the kids at bedtime with the lights out because they use their imagination. And to lose in nature, the strong survive and the weak go extinct. Dead. Not being seen in animation gives you incredible license to, do, to make outrageous choices you wouldn't make if you were on camera. Be, uh, so it's, uh, it's liberating. I'd love to make this sound profound and give you the difference between doing it for live action and animation. But as far as I'm concerned, there's no difference. You just say the lines as best you can, hope that they're anywhere near as good as Mark Hamill would have said them, and you just, uh, that's it. Captain America, Agent Carter, let's go. To me, the great appeal, the brilliant thing that I came up with is their rallying cry when they say, Avengers assemble. I mean, if that doesn't get every little kid. I just got chills. You know, some little kid is being picked on by a bully in the street, and all of a sudden he says, oh my God, Avengers assemble. <laughs> and before, I mean, it, it's become part of our life. Yeah. And um, I think that the world owes me a little something for that. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> I think the cameo that's my favorite is the one I did for Thor. And I'm standing in a bar with him, and he's drinking this Asgardian drink, which is very powerful. And I ask for a sip, and he says, no, it would kill you. And I insist, and he gives me a sip, and in the next scene, they're carrying me out. <laughs> now, you're saying to yourself, why is this Stan's favorite cameo? And you haven't thought of the real reason. It's the only one I did that has two scenes. Wow. <laughs> so I'm hoping it does right. well. Next time they'll give me three scenes. Right. You, right. Never, you never know where it'll end. I, I hope it never ends. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen, so much. It's great talking to you. Hey, thank, thank you, Mark. It's Jeez, been it's our always a pleasure. pleasure. Exactly. Right. Don't shut up. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs>